Describe him to me. And Muslims, look at the description of your Rasul. And for some, this would be the first time you hear what your Prophet looked like. I saw a man of striking appearance. ظاهر الوضاء أبلج الوجه Radiant face حسن الخلق Beautifully created لم تعبه الثجلة His belly wasn't protruding ولم تزر به السعلة Nor was his head disproportionate and small وسيم قسيم Proportionate and delicate Finely made a specimen of a creation and in his eyes there was a contrast the dark was immensely dark the white was excessively white and his eyelashes were long and in his voice was a natural echo and his neck was elegantly long his beard was full and thick. Azaj, Akran, his eyebrows were arced, but they were not joint. It was separated. In summit, Fa'alayhi al Waqar, when he was silent, dignity covered him. Wa in takallama samahu wa alahu al Baha, and when he spoke, it was audible and clear. Almost commanding and overtaking. Ajmal and Nas wa abhahum min ba'id. From afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. Wa ahsanuhum wa ajmaluhum min qareeb. And when he came near, the best of them and the most handsome of them in closeness. Hulwul mantiq. So, such an exalted and sweet level of logic. Like when he used to speak, it was so coherently logical. It was smooth and easy to understand. Faslun la nazrun wa la hazr. He was to the point, not excessive, nor too short. Ka'anna mantiqahu kharazatu nazmin yatahaddarn. His logic, his utterances, his words were like jewels coming out of a necklace, calculated, polished, one after the other, it would flow magically. Rab'atun, he was medium in height. Your eye didn't have to strain to look up at him, nor was it tedious to look down at him. He was a comfortable sight to look at. Lahu rufaqa yahufuna bih. They had friends, the people that were with him, they were working around him to try to serve and protect him. In qala sami'u li qawlih, when he used to say something, they used to hearken to what he used to say. Wa in amara tabadaru ila amri, when he commanded, they used to compete to fulfill the command. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. Anas ibn Malik says, he says, I came out one night, uh, in, I came out one night that was the full moon night. And I looked at the moon and in the desert understand the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth. It is radiant. It is clear, it is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at a full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and he said, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon in its entirety. That that is just the look of your Rasul.
Aisha radiyallahu anha says, I was sewing with a needle. My needle dropped in the dark. I couldn't find it. I said, Ya Rasul, I can't find it. He moved his face close and I swear, out of the radiance of his face, I found my needle. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was mind bogglingly handsome. But his handsomeness was covered with waqar in Jalal in Hayba. The Sahaba say, when we used to sit at, at his feet, two feelings conflicting would come on the heart. The first one, you wanted to look at him. You wanted to behold the majesty of his face. And when you wanted to look up, shyness used to overtake you, so you used to look down. Amr ibn al-As says, I sat with him many times, but if you ask me to describe his face, I can't describe it. I wouldn't be able to look up to him ijlalan wa ta'zeeman. I couldn't look up at him. And that is why he didn't have the problems that Yusuf alayhi salam had. Because it was difficult to penetrate the awe and the splendor of the Rasul.